Hey, what's up Dendo users, I'm Jonathan, and in today's video, after about 3 months of not really using it, I wanted to again have a look at Mantaflow and see what has changed. For that purpose, we'll be creating this wallpaper in the newest build of Blender 2.9. Oh, and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing, because I upload a new video every Saturday, and with that said, let's get straight into the video. Okay, we'll first start with our background. For this, let's just add in a plane and scale it up a bit. Now let's give it a new material. Let's add in two image textures and add in this fingerprint texture and this smudge texture both from Polygon. Now we can use these two to control our base color, roughness and normal. So let's go into material preview mode and preview these materials. Now we have to scale this one down. So let's add in a texture coordinate and a mapping node with Ctrl T. Of course you will have to have node wrangler enabled and give it a scale of, for example, 3. Duplicate this mapping node, connect it, and give the other texture a scaling of, for example, 2. Okay, now we can combine these two by Control shift and with right click dragging across both nodes. Now we have a mix node, and we can use this one with, for example, screen, and add both of them together. Great, now let's just plug the color output into the base color input, as well as into the roughness input. Let's also add in a bump node, connect these two and connect the normal out and inputs. Great, now we can preview our principled BSDF. This gives us this look. Now this is of course way too harsh, so let's turn down the strength to for example 0.25 and let's add in a color ramp to the roughness input and to the base color input. Now let's preview our roughness input and let's drag the white slider to the left and let's also make the background a lighter gray. And for the base color, let's make the white handle a gray color, just like this. Now we can again preview our principal PSDF, and this looks pretty good. Let's also go into the world nodes and add in an environment texture. Okay, awesome. Now in rendered mode, it looks like this, but we'll be rendering our final scene in cycles, so let's switch over. Okay, let's now work on our fire. Lately I've been experimenting with zero gravity movement and I found that using some force fields you can actually get some really interesting looking fire. So let's go ahead and just disable gravity and add in a small sphere. To add all the physics effects we can just search for quick smoke, press enter and now let's align our domain with the ground. This way we don't have to specify our ground plane as a collision plane because the smoke will collide with the domain sides. Now let's also scale our domain up, just like this. And now is a good time to save our project. Okay, great. Now let's specify all these settings we need for our simulation. You can see that in our domain we still have gravity, so let's turn this to zero. Now if we play our animation, you can see that the smoke just stays at its origin point. This is of course not what we want, and that's why we will have to add a force field. And for me, this is going to be a turbulence one. Now let's up the strength a bit to, for example, about three. And if we now play our animation, you can see nothing is happening. This is because the replay mode is a bit buggy right now. So let's change our cache folder to one that we like and change our baking type to modular and also check is resumable. This will just make it easier for us later on. Okay, let's click on bake data. You can see that this went really fast and we can now preview our simulation. And you can see that we get an abstract result, which is perfect for the wallpaper I'm imagining. But for now, let's free our bake and select our emitter object. I want to use more sampling substeps, that's why I'm gonna put 24 in there. This will just improve our quality. Now let's also use fire and smoke and a fuel amount of, for example, 1.5. Because for this wallpaper, I won't be rendering the smoke. This is why I want to have more fire in the scene. Now let's again select our domain and use a resolution division of 128. Make sure to not put it too high, because this value actually affects how the simulation will look in the end. A higher value means a basically bigger domain in the world. Now, we can now bake the data and have a look at our simulation. Okay, as a base, this looks pretty solid, but of course we are missing a lot of detail. We can add further detail by enabling noise. This will not only add noise for detail purposes, but we can also use this to up our simulation. For the final wallpaper, I used a factor of 5, but for now I'm just gonna use 2. I will also turn down the strength of the noise to around 
Now once you have enabled noise, you will see that your simulation disappears. This is because we haven't baked it yet. Another thing you might notice is that now OpenVDB is the standard format for saving simulations. This is great because we now have the new volume object which is now compatible with Mantaflow. But we won't go into this in today's video. So now we can just hit bake noise. Okay, for the purposes of today's video, I will stop the baking process right here. Because even though Mantaflow is said to be faster, it still takes some time. So, now we have baked in our noise and we can see that we can see much more detail in our simulation. Of course, this still isn't ideal, but we only used a upper factor of 2. If you used a higher one and your viewport is now starting to lag, you can always disable the noise and work on the shading without it. You can then, just before you render, enable the noise and it will work just fine. Now that I've talked about the shading, let's continue with that. So let's switch into rendered mode and we can see that right now we can only see smoke and the sphere emitter. So let's first disable the sphere in the render and in the viewport and select our smoke domain. Now let's put the density to zero. This will just get rid of our entire simulation. But if we now up the black body intensity to one, we can see that our flames start to appear. Before we continue, let me just quickly tell you about this volume setting right here. If you want to render your simulation with smoke, I would suggest you setting this to a value of 5. This will just make the smoke look more realistic, because the light of the flames will actually bounce around in the smoke. But because we won't render the smoke, we can keep this at 0 and that way save some render time. Now, this doesn't look that great, because flames would be, well let's say, much brighter. So let's up the black part intensity to for example 10. Now this looks a lot better, but let's actually add in some nodes to make this look a little bit better. Let's first use the attribute node and type in flame. Now connect the factor to a math node and choose multiply and connect the value to the black body intensity. By now upping the multiply, we get a much better result. You will really start to see the benefits of this method when using a more detailed simulation. Now, in the beginning, I showed you differently colored flames. To do this, we will use the black body tint value. By adjusting this color wheel, we also adjust the color of the flames. So, let's add in a noise texture, as well as a color ramp, and in the color ramp, let's add in some sliders and use different colors for each of them. And now connect the noise texture to the color ramp and the color ramp's color output to the black body tint. We can now adjust the look of our flames with this scale. And you can see how this affects the color. Now let's finally preview the shading with the final resolution. So let's enable noise back. Enabling noise back will of course load a few seconds or even minutes if you baked it with a higher up -risk factor. But now we can preview our shading. Of course, I would have had to simulate it longer to get more spread of the fire, but again, this would have taken too much time. So, that's basically it. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, consider liking and subscribing, and we will see you in the next video, next Saturday. Bye.